Hey there, Butlin Soul Weekender Facebook page. Hope you're having a good day. I'm going to tell you about a conversation I was having with, I wouldn't call her a friend, just someone I know. And I was at a venue called We Love Soul. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with We Love Soul, the idea of that place is to cater for old school um, clubbers such as myself. So the, the the music lineup is it's very underground. Um, yeah, it, it's it's underground funky, um, and they, you have two rooms. Uh, one room is like soulful house, soulful funky house. The other room is like in underground funky groove from from back in the day, from your your seventies up to your early eighties. But it, it all all things on the funky side, underground side. Anyway, so. I said to her, oh, you know, we're talking about places that we've been to. And I've said to her, like, you know, apart from We Love Soul, there's another venue they have in Bracknell. Um, it sounds like We Love Soul. We, something so. We, anyway, but there's another doing Bracknell that's got a similar name, like, uh, similar name to We Love Soul, but I can't figure remember the, remember the name of it. And obviously you've got Halin Soul Weekender as well. So we're talking about various places we've been to. And I mentioned um, the Butlins and at Weekender. And then she looked at me with a very scornful expression on her face like, Butlin? And she, she even said, what, Butlins? She goes, what, watching Middle England get drunk? So I said to her, listen, listen, you may have your prejudice, prejudice against Butlins, but one thing I do like about Butlins is you could let yourself go. You, you know, um, not... Very few people give a sh gives a shit. You get you get the odd one or two conservative snobs there, but in on on the main, it, no one gives a shit. You dress in fancy dress, and you can let your hair down. So, um, the, the see now let let me explain something about myself. Right at the end of the day, where I really am, like where I really am at when it comes to music preference. Many music preference, I like underground music. I love all things underground and fresh and funky, be it from your soulful house music to your old school grooves, be it your b-boy funk, breakdance funk like your, your upscore James Brown to your um, Parliament, George Clinton, your Zap and um, Roger Trampman Zap and stuff like that. You know, I, I'm more on the deep, deep side of the track. I think the loose, the Luther of Andros and uh, uh, Alexander O'Neill sort of side of things, they're nice to listen to, but to get down dirty on the dance floor, I mean, because I'm a dance floor trooper, even at this um, old age or 55 years old, I'm without sounding big headed i'm physically fitter than the average person i can if you if you know anything about me you you would know that i my dance ability is, is quite advanced i could quite easily break dance a windmill spin on my back hold my body up with one one arm i'm just giving an idea of the character that i am and the sort of environment that, that i come from so i so i was clubbing in the hardcore clubs back in the day with the cats on a dance floor so however however i am open-minded enough and mature enough to to delve in in its uh, areas that's not so serious you see and now that's the problem with my fellow funky tier the, that is the problem with the people who go to a place like we love soul not all of them the problem with people who go to we love soul Hailing Soul Weekender and um, places like that is I find that a lot of them's never grown out of that it crowd, the in crowd vibe mentality. See, back in the day when we were teenagers in the late 70s, early 80s, there was two sides of the track. You had your mainstream side and you had the underground side. So, for example, like and radio stations like Capital Radio, Radio One, they would only play, obviously, the the mainstream stuff in prime time. If you wanted to hear something like Dancing Out of Space by Atmosphere, you'd have to tune in at one o'clock in the morning, or 
Saturday morning on um, Robbie Vincent show or something like that. And um, back in the in the day as well, you rated the DJ by the new tracks. If he, he if the more tracks he played that you were unfamiliar with, the better the DJ was back in the day. So if he had um, a version of a mainstream track that no one else has heard, or he was the first to play it. If he played, I don't know, for example, I don't know, just trying to think of an example of a track. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Let me think of a track that everyone will know. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't think of something that everyone would know, to be honest with you, right at the moment. Uh, okay, let, let, just, just, just for argument's sake, let's say he, he played... Um, Rhythm Nation by Janet Jackson, for argument's sake. And, um, but he played it six months before everyone else heard it. Then he would be rated. I mean, I obviously I'm, I'm talking about time further back to Janet Jackson, but you kind of get, you get the idea. You get the idea, right? So that was how the D DJs was rated back then. Okay. So, um, I was going to say, so the problem with that crowd is they never really grow out of that. Yeah, I'm cooler than thou. You know, I um I I am more I am more um hip, more I am more hip than your mainstream um mainstream clubbers as such. And um, the the sad thing is by now your your parent, even grandparents. And you should have left that shit behind. And the problem I find with that crowd again is because they have that attitude, it makes them very conservative. And it, in fact, it makes them quite boring. Obviously, this does not apply to all of them. I mean, let's, let's take the Hailing Soul Weekender. I love the Connoisseur Room. The Connoisseur Room is brilliant. You know, they really play the dirty, funky beats. And and the dancers, you, you know, you, you, you're amongst fellow dancers who's really... Um, cutting the rug, rug in, in that room, but the mainstream room, I find it's a bit, it's a bit more conservative, and that's why I find the crowd a bit, a bit in a boring side. So, what is the difference between the Butlins and there? Even though I prefer the music in the funky places, but I enjoy the time I have at the Butlins because I liken it to having sex with two different types of women. One top woman. She's not that adventurous in the bedroom, you know, no oral sex. She just stays in one position. She wants the lights off and it's very, uh, um, very laid back. And you, you just go, you just run with her flow. A, a glorified, a glorified wank, glorified wank. All right. And then you, you got another woman. She's good to go. She's freaking adventurous. She's, you know, she's damn right. Uh, Dan and Dirty. She she likes to the, making the home video. She poses for photographs. Um, dresses in sexy underwear. Um, she she knows how to work your body like a uh, aircraft engineer. You know uh, she she knows her way around a man's body, and you know way your way around her body. That's the difference. Um, me going to uh, Butlins is like having sex with the adventure film. I can let myself go and so forth. But then, even though I'm enjoying. Um, getting down in the funky clubs, right? Would you call it the attitude? The attitude of the of the people in the funky clubs is like the unadventurous lover, you know, very conservative, very um, laid back as such. There you go, and that's that's my and that's my opinion. I just wanted to kind of share the the uh, the th what that a fucking annoying beeping. I don't know if you could hear it. Someone's Alarm's going off and it's really put me off, you know. But anyway, there you go. So that that that's it. that's the people who don't go to Butlins don't know the score. That you you know you okay. It hasn't got the coolest music. It hasn't got the most underground music. You're not going to hear the dirtiest beats, but you're going to have a lot of fun. That's 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 the sum of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye.